Okay. Um, yeah, so as uh, Joel pointed out, I'm going to make some spoons today. Um, there are two things I didn't like about the way I've seen most people make spoons. Uh, number one, and I'm going to give a, show you a spoon here that's kind of half finished. So uh, this one, normally when people make spoons, this area is, this is round. Okay. Yeah. Whereas uh, I like to see it more like a regular spoon shape, and that is more of an oval type shape. The other thing I don't like is when most people do it, they mount it on the lathe, and you have the uh, the spoon, the handle spinning around like a propeller, which always seemed kind of dangerous to me. So I've been thinking for some time about how you would make a uh, spoon where you didn't have those two problems. So let me talk a little bit about how I, how I do it. I move this down just a little bit. Okay, um, what I wanted to do was use one inch boards like this one. Um, and uh, I wanted to be able to mount it on the lathe and I wanted to be able to, when I turn it around, when it's going around the lathe, I wanted to be able to hollow it out. You know, just the way you'd hollow a hollow form or a vase or something. But that brings two questions, two problems. One is, how do you mount this on the lathe where it's going to be a ways away from the head and you hollow it from the end so that it doesn't vibrate, so it's on there solid? The second question is, how far from the center should this be? In other words, um, let me do it like this. If you see the end, if I'm going to rotate it around, the center of rotation, they say, is the end of my finger here. How high should my finger be off of that wood? Should it be an inch, two inches, three inches? What should it be? So um, <laughs> what I'm going to do is show you a little uh, graphics to see about how far away the um, wood should be from the center. And I can't do that until Steve gives me um, the share capabilities on my computer here. And maybe I can do this. Okay, I'm not, I'm not quite sure to do that, so I'm not gonna do that right now. What I'll do instead is show you how I make the jig to hold it. Well, I did some calculations and I'll show you those in a little bit. But um, what I found was that I needed to have the wood approximately an inch away from the center, okay? So if the center of the lathe is here, I'd want it an inch above, so it'd be going around like that. Well, how am I gonna do that? How am I gonna fasten it to lay so it's, so it's solid? Well, I started just kind of looking at things, seeing what's available, and I found this. This is a Beale extension, and it's eight inches long. It's solid aluminum, and the diameter is one and three quarter inches. So that means the radius is about seven eighths of an inch, which is really close to an inch. So I thought, this is what I need. This, is the, this has to be the base, or this can be the base of what I use. Now, the first one I saw, I, I hadn't seen these before, or I hadn't noticed them. Um, first one I saw, or the first one I bought, had one inch threads, and I wanted one and a quarter, so I have an adapter on here. But you can buy one that's whatever threads you want, one inch or one and a quarter. So this is the base. So now what I do is I make a shell around it. And here's the shell. Basically, it's just a piece of wood. It's inch and I made it an inch and three quarters. You can make it two inches if you want. Uh, it's three inches this way across here. And it's six inches long. I drilled it out. As you can see here, that's an inch and three quarters. So this fits in. And then I, on this end, I, oh, and I drilled this four and a half inches. So it comes to about here, I'd say. And then I drilled a hole here so I can put a bolt in. And I inset a little bit so that uh, the bolt doesn't stick out. I have a washer in there. And that's what's gonna hold the wood. So let me go ahead and tighten that on and we'll, we'll try it and see how it works. And the purpose of that bolt is what, Neil? Do you thread the wood and let put me, that bolt uh, in there? Just this no. a bit. Can you see? They want to know if you threaded the wood. 
No, the wood's not threaded. The wood is just drilled out. So it's, see it. Uh, let's see, can you give me an overhead here? Okay, so if you look at this, I just tightened it, but if I loosen it a little bit, this just rotates around. So there's nothing holding that at this point except friction until I tighten the bolt. And then when I tighten the bolt, oops. Yeah, on the end of the aluminum bar, there's, uh, there's threads to go on the, on the head, but I didn't have to thread anything. And the other end of the bar, Neil has what three eighths thread for? Uh, a yeah, the steel those three eighths inch threads on this end. So this right. bolt's just a three eighths inch standard bolt. Okay. Okay. So here's what I do for the blanks. Um, my blanks, I make them twelve inches long, a little bit less than three inches, say two and seven eighths wide, and they're one inch boards, standard one inch boards. So um, it's about an inch thick, three quarters an inch to an inch thick. So I mount them like this. I just slide them in here. Oh, notice I put sandpaper on each surface so that it holds it better. So I slide this on and I put a mark here at, let's see, I don't know if you can see that or not. Here in the end, now the camera's not situated so you can see it, but maybe I can move it a little bit. Yeah, you can see there's a line here. I make that line so it's just even. And I do the same thing for a second one. Let's see, these would be good ones to use. Yeah. I'll use this one. So I'll turn it the other way. Put this one on. And then I'll tighten these U bolts. Neil, did you make those U-bolts or where do you get them? You can get them at, uh, I bought them online. I think probably Amazon, if I remember right. But if you just look online, you can find them. The U-bolts are three inches across and you'd like them to be five inches long, uh, but I couldn't find any that were five inches. So I had to get a six inch and I just cut off an inch. So if they aren't sticking out too far, I probably could have cut off a little bit more. Okay, so now I just wanna make sure they're good and centered. I want them, Let's see if I can see the edge here. You can see the edge. I want this edge so it's straight along that edge. And I want them in, uh, you probably can't see that, but down here, I want that line to be right lined up there. You see it okay? Okay, so that looks pretty good. So I'll take a wrench and tighten that. Now, one thing you might be thinking is when I hollow this, it looks a little bit dangerous because you got all that air space in there. And um, what you don't want to do is when you're hollowing, oh, I didn't check this one carefully. That's close enough. You don't want to come in here when you're hollowing and have your tool come out here and catch and knock this board loose or something. So you kind of have to be careful about that. When I first was doing this, I just hollowed it like it was and I didn't have much trouble until I had trouble. And then I had trouble because <laughs> it got caught between these two and it had a terrible catch and it, that wasn't a pretty thing. So what I do now is I have this, um, let's see here, I'll put it right there. It's a square three inch by three inch holes in all the corners. And in the center, I have a hole that's one and three quarter inches to match the size of the uh, opening here. So what I'm gonna do is just screw it into the end boards. Let's see, can we get a picture from the back here? Here we go. So I'm gonna screw it in like that. So I have to make sure I get it pretty well centered. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'll first mark it. So I'll mark it. And then I'll Use the punch. And 
and I'll drill it just, uh, just enough so it's easy to get the screws in. Or I went deeper than I needed to probably. Now this, uh, this piece that I'm putting on there, I call it a safety shield. It can be made of anything. I, I did this on a 3D printer, but you can do it with wood. All you'd have to do is just, you know, make the square and drill the holes. Thing that's nice about the 3D printer though is I don't have to worry about what orientation I put it on. It's still gonna fit, right? Hopefully. Oh, there we are. This is uh, much easier at home. Well, I didn't get that quite perfect, but it'll be okay. I hope. Okay, and now I will go ahead and put the screws in. Helps to go the right direction. And this is just for safety. Okay, now I'm ready to hollow. I think the best camera will be the overhead camera for this. So Steve, can you switch over there? You'll be able to see what I'm doing exactly because we'll have a, the gap here. So it makes it so you can see. Um, so first of all, let me show you where I'm gonna be cutting. The spoon, the scoop part of the spoon will go from approximately here to approximately, can you see that? Is that yeah. right there? Yes. Approximately here. And I'll go ahead and mark the other side too. Just approximately, it doesn't have to be exactly there. And then I'm gonna use a Trent Bosch hollowing tool um, you can, whatever, whatever you hollow with will work though. Um, I like this because with the long handle, it does a good job. It's fairly aggressive. So let's see if this works. It's always a good idea when you start, especially something like this, to stand back a bit. Start it slow. Oops, what's, what's that noise coming from? Oh, it's not on all the way. There we go. All right, let's try that. I may wanna adjust it. Yeah, it looks pretty good for, okay. So can you see the, uh, can you see the tool in there? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna just start cutting. I'm gonna have to move this camera because it's a little bit in the way here. And now what I'm gonna do is think what is, how a spoon is shaped. And I forgot one thing, I should have my uh, uh, face shield on. Okay, so let's see. You have options of shaping this however you want. You don't have to do it oval like I did. You can make it more round. Whatever shape you want, but I tend to try to make it the shape of a standard spoon. Now, if you've never done any hollowing before, this may not be the best way to start, but if you've done a little bit of hollowing, this is a good way to practice because you can see exactly where you're cutting. Now let's stop and see what it looks like. Okay, I haven't gone far enough yet. Um, 
you can see there that on this one, it's pretty close to where I want it in front, but back I want it further. <laughs> it's hard for me to get, there we go. Front's about where I want it, back needs to go further back. And the same with this, the other one. They're not quite perfectly symmetric because when I made my jig here, I think it's off just a little bit, but they're pretty close. So let's, I'm gonna go ahead and cut some more. So what you wanna do is just take, just be, take your time and um, make small cuts. Are you going about halfway down the one inch board to, for the depth? Let's see how that looks. Okay, I think that's good enough for a demonstration. I might go a little deeper sometimes. Now, the problem with that cutter is that you don't get a real smooth um, surface with that. So what I'm gonna use now is um, this tool. Where am I? There we go. Uh, this is one of Todd's tools. It's a, a scraper. Um, it, uh, it comes yeah, as just a regular middle. scraper. I redid the tip of it to make it so that it's um, a negative rake scraper because I want to use it just for making a really nice surface on there and it does a good job. If what I can, speed are you going? I do a good job. I probably need to raise this just a tad. But again, whatever Halloween tools you use would probably work Speed are you turning at, Neil? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, there was a few questions about uh, how fast you were turning that, uh, Neil. Yeah, I don't know what I don't. There's there's no uh, gauge on here that I can tell. But at home, what I do is I turn at about fifteen hundred to maybe seventeen hundred RPMs. Okay. Uh, the main thing is since there's. Uh, since you're doing a lot of air turning, you need to go a little bit faster than what you might first feel comfortable with. But 15 or 1700 is usually what I use. Okay. What other and questions? 